All right, guys. So in this video, I'm going to take you like step by step in real time of using MBP SKN FC3 and CMX2 on an edit because I want to I want to show you what it's like to work in real time. See how fast it actually is. And I'm not going to try to go extra fast. I'm just going to do it. So let's take a note. It is 1141 a.m. as you can see in the corner there. Let's get started. So I'm going to run SKN on the cleanup mode. Going to let that do its thing. SKN, if you don't know, it'll find the subject and then extract the skin tone to make a mask and then do lots of cool layers that then we can adjust. So let, let's take a look at the initial result and then see what we get. As you can see, it's it's going pretty fast. All right, so we have a result. Um, I can secondary smooth, that's too much. I can increase their day, you know, texture recovery a bit, maybe just a little bit less texture. I kind of like where that's going, but I'm going to take the opacity down because I don't want it to be that strong, but I like the overall look. Take the luminosity down because I feel like it brightened her too much. That's not bad. I'm going to, I think, yeah, the hue balance is good, but I don't want to do it too much. I want, Yeah, I think that works, but I'm going to make it more towards red. I think that works pretty good. I like how smooth and clean that is. Little micro details I might... Um, edit I might not I don't know but let's go to SKN tone hit play and it's going to use the same mask had I modified it it would have used the one I modified so now let's see I'm going to deepen her tan a little bit I can do it quite a bit if I want and then desaturate because it's a little bit overly colorful could play with the highlights if I wanted to but I think I'm just going to leave them somewhat there not too bad throw a little grade on it I'm thinking that one might be good Increase the opacity to make it a little stronger, but let's decrease the saturation of the grade and then the overall saturation in general. Yeah, I don't mind that. Let's go back to toning, eh, maybe a little less desaturation and shift again towards red. I kind of like the red tones a little bit and just a little less opacity, something like that. So I've gone from this to this so far. I like it. Flatten to a new layer. And now I'm going to use FC3 on auto portrait mode. I'm going to put it on rough because I want to find a broader uh, radius that's going to allow me to do some healing. And FC3 will calculate that based on the face size relative to the image. So we have a 21 pixel radius. So now we can zoom in, find our healing brush because we're on the heel, heel layer. And we can do some key healing that we want. Doesn't need a whole, whole lot, I don't think. I kind of like a little bit more of a natural look. But I can do some heels. Not a whole lot of flyaway hairs to deal with because the depth of field is so thin, but that's kind of cool. But if you want to obliterate all the moles, you definitely can. I'd rather do this manually like I do here, just so I know exactly what I want to modify and don't. Yeah, that looks pretty clean. I kind of like where that's going. Okay, excellent. And now while I'm here, now I want to be able to kind of tone down this highlight on the forehead, right? So I'm at 21 pixel radius, which is kind of high. But what's great is that without changing anything, I can just choose tight on auto portrait, hit play on FC3. And then it'll recalculate something tight for me as a nine radius. So then I can go to the transitions layer. I'm going to choose like a 4% flow, take some of the skin tone and tone down that highlight a bit. Just tone it down, especially on the forehead. We don't want any of that. Maybe bring the shadow over there too. Let's see what we got. A little bit strong, but let's look at it overall. Not bad. Maybe make it like a 70%. I like that. So I went from this to this. I like where that edit's going. And now I'm going to... I don't have to stamp to a new layer, but I'm going to. There we go. And now I'm going to go to CMX2. I found this cool image of like a, a golden hour window thing. I kind of like, so I want to work with that. So with CMX2, I'm going to scan it or analyze it. That's kind of cool. I was hoping for some of those greens. Didn't quite happen. Maybe I can modify it. Let's see. So I'll go back to our image and we're going to apply it. Okay. So there it is applied. It's not bad. A little strong, but I really wish I had some of that green. Let's go to the expert mode. Um, maybe I can get green out of this one. We have hue and we're going to shift it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I got a nice green. That's, that's beautiful. Okay. I like that. Smooth it out a bit. Change the opacity, it's a little strong, but I went from that to that. Okay, I wanted that green tone, like sort of in the shadows, and I kind of got it, and that's kind of cool. I could also make it just the shadows. Maybe a little deeper shadows, not more into the shadows from this to that. A little stronger. Overlay, is that too strong? Yeah, overlay is too strong. From that to that. Just gonna look at color for a minute. Color's a little more subtle. I like the contrast of, of soft light. Brighten that a bit from there to there. So I went from this out of camera to a clean edit 
that I think looks pretty nice. I think I like the look of this. It has a nice tone to it. Um, you know, and I can extract other palettes and play around. I can go to my presets of the gradients and try other ones. So, you know, gosh, there's so many. Um, you know what? I didn't save the other presets. So I'm not going to do that. But I knew I wanted this, this sunset. So now it's 1146. It's taken me five minutes. This is with me talking. <laughs> and I have a clean edit and a color grade. And this is basically like ready to go at this point. The color grade can sit on top with CMX2 if I wanted to. I could take this flattened version and liquefy if I want to liquefy the hair or anything like that or any micro details and CMX2 would still sit on top. Now what's interesting is that I want to mention that at this point you notice I kept all these layers. Now this makes for a big file if you save a PSD, make no mistake. But think about this, you can save the PSD if you need to go backwards. It's more of a commercial approach, right? So if someone says, um, your client or you say, I don't, I don't like, you know, what I did on something. Um, my frequency separation work is too strong. It's sloppy. I don't like it. You can get rid of the flattened one. If you want here, if you didn't flatten, uh, to a new layer, you can just come back into FC3 and keep playing or editing or modifying or changing radius to, to change things around. If you decide that going backwards, you messed up the skin work, you didn't like the SKN settings, you can just delete these layers if you really, really needed to. Just delete all of these and then go back to SKN and then flatten it. See, there's always a way to go back. You can go to all these steps. And this is just one recommended sort of workflow with the three panels. By no means you have to use all of these to make something work right. You can also start with FC3, do your healing first, then run SKN. There's all kinds of variabilities. And of course, on top of CMX2, the layer stack that we have there, the layer folder, uh, you could come in and choose something else. So I choose um, selective color. And let's say I come in here and I start modifying other things from there to there. That's eh, a little bit too strong. But you know what? I'm gonna take this selective color layer and make it like 65%. There we go. See, again, with me talking and showing everything to you guys, it's taken me five or six minutes. I could have done this in like three. And this is a full res image. And see how easy it is? It's that's why we created the tools to be useful, not just for someone who wants something efficient and, and to be fast, but for the professional who wants detailed control. Because at any moment, you could tweak things. You can modify things. You can go backwards. Like I said, if you need to just delete the layers of what process you were on redo some things, flatten and keep going. And if you get really into a workflow that works for you with these three panels, I guarantee you, you're going to get like a nice balance of custom manual work, not just pushing buttons and getting what you get. Um, a, a balance of that custom manual work and efficiency. And that is the hallmark of what we produce here at MBP, not just these three panels, but with panels that we have planned, we always think about how the hobbyist or the person who needs hyper efficiency for high volume, whatever you may be, all the way to the detailed artist retoucher who wants finite control. We just give you the tools that are flexible enough to give you those opportunities to tailor your workflow or rather tailor the tools into your workflow.